This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Candy bars, 15 cent hamburgers. Hamburgers. When a dollar went a long way, and so did 24 hours. The 60s and the 70s, dwelling place of a lost generation. We who grew up in this era had no real heroes. Our role models came from the imaginations of others. Our meager lives were formed by and revolved around weekly installments of our favorite TV programs. Welcome to a place that your parents didn't understand. A place that exists somewhere between the forefront of recollectable memory and the edge of everyday thought. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome home. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Good evening, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And today, it's Superheroes! That's right, it's uh, live-action superheroes uh, we've seen throughout the 60s and 70s. The, and uh, we're including stuff like the old Adventures of Superman series, which really didn't get to its height of syndication until the 60s. And uh, we're, uh, by the way, we're excluding the Batman series because we did a special episode just about them. We may mention them in turn, but we're not really going to spend any time on them. We're spending time on everybody else. And let's go right out to Wilbert or this, uh, this guy over here, to Cato with our... Uh, <laughs> Cato Hornet. <laughs> Cato Hornet with our uh, first point of the evening. You have insulted my family. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, <laughs> able to leap tall, tall buildings in a single down. Able to talk Look, straight. <laughs> it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, Yay! Superman, strange visitor from Yay! another planet, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, basically, um, that's probably our first, um, <laughs> our first that we would have come in contact with was Here's Superman. One. Yeah, yeah, that's you, that, definitely. That would have been our first show. Our, First big one, the Adventures of oh. Superman. Well, I've even got a better, let's see. Well, what do you got? Oh, you got a good picture, but I got yeah, a better picture. Like, uh, oh, yeah, it's like, what was his name? Oh, I've got George a good picture. George Reeves. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, what's his name? George Reeves? Yeah, this is George Reeves. Did anybody besides me ever notice that his glasses never had any glass? <laughs> well, you know. I never worked with him. details. <laughs> Gee, Clark. We got, we you got, got bad eyesight or what? <laughs> We got we got stills a plenty here. So, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, the uh, the the Superman series. The uh, series course, itself. Let's see. Yeah, uh, George know. Reeves, of course, uh, man who uh, unfortunately committed suicide at at least uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 legend. All the reports. Yeah, go. the legend says that he killed himself thinking he was Superman. He jumped out a window or something. No, he was but actually no, shot. It was. It's, now it's come through that he was shot, and they're thinking that it was he was actually shot by somebody else because the angle of the trajectory of the bullet, the way it entered oh, his head or whatever, second, was uh, it looked like he would have had to been standing upside down. <laughs> yeah. And he would have had to have held the gun out ridiculous. there, which would have been impossible, by the way, because there that's were no... That's the big second no, fan um, theory. You know, there's no... Uh, cor there were no burns on his hand, you know. Well, so anyway, anyway he, was, he, was, he would have been our first superhero on TV for people of our age. That's right. right. Let me see. The Superman show was produced from July 
1951 till November of 1957. That's 104 big episodes, boys and girls. But it wasn't shown until like well, two we years the after it, they started ta taping them, unless I'm mistaken, or, or filming them, unless I'm mistaken. That's, that's quite possible. Here, yeah, that's so, so they, uh, basically, uh, the, the people who were producing the show decided that uh, it was, uh, they looked ahead, some, something that almost nobody else was doing, they said, eventually we're gonna have color. And uh, so they went ahead and taped uh, all the episodes in color, right? Um, Is well, it all quite, or just part of them? Quite a few of them. Let me like see. The first if couple actually... seasons were in black and white, but yes. long before anyone even had color to show, they started filming them in color because it didn't cost them all that much more, and uh, and they figured it would uh, make them more money in the long run, which it did. Of course, uh, in the old um, in the old uh, black and white episodes. Uh, a couple things people don't, a lot of people don't know is the fact that Superman's costume in the, in the black and white episodes was like brown and gray. Yeah. Oh, I have a photograph of yeah. those too. Yeah, because oh. red and blue, the re actual red and blue uh, costume <laughs> didn't look right in black and white film. So they didn't use it. They found the closest thing that looked like red and blue was brown and gray. It was like a leather or something. Wool. Um, it, was wool. It, was, wool. it was wool with leather accoutrements or yeah. whatever. Yeah, leather we saw them up in Boy, that's, that, that would have to be fun to spend a day every oh, day. Oh, yeah. You know, you're hot lights. No hot lights. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's see. It says now here, though, although the first batch of 26 Superman films were made in 51, the series did not reach local stations until late 52. Yep. And then from 53 to 57, additional groups of films were made. It was okay. always syndicated, right? Um, yeah. yeah, it was never sent to the see, network. It was not on a network. It's syndicated and network daytime, but yeah, but it was never. It was daytime? never on a prime time. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Well, of course I wasn't around, so I don't. That was before my, everything. My whole memory of uh, was soaps. yeah, everything was soaps in my memories. You turned on the TV and it was a soap opera every right. afternoon. And so that And was then probably next came along. Well, it seemed like there was one year, sixty-five or sixty-six where Captain Nice and Mr. Terrific. There you go. But they did not actually come out until after um, Batman did. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So well, we it was because it, that was their big theory. It was like they, they saw, the, saw kind of like the, the get smart satire type thing, and they saw the Batman uh, campy hero type thing. They said, well, two, like basically well, two those, people. One of them was... was uh, one of them was written by Buck Henry. Right. Um, Captain Nice. Captain, Captain Nice, nice was, was written yeah. by Buck Henry. So they said, well, let's kind of go into that thing, and both of them flopped miserably. And uh, I liked it. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah, they were exactly. fun. Let's see here. Let me let me run down some things here. Um, Captain, Captain Nice, nice. Ran from January 9, 1967, till April 28th of 67. So that's basically a whole season, a whole half of a season. Yep. <laughs> right. And, um, hey, Captain Nice was played by William Daniels, who later went on to be the voice of, of Kit. Kit. Oh, and whoa, doctor a doctor and, and on St. Elsewhere. elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he was also yeah. in The Graduate. Whoa. Well, that's fun. And then uh, Mr. Terrific ran from, oh, by golly, January 9, 1967 <laughs> to August 28, 1967. What a coincidence. <laughs> I think One they was were on, together. Well, Cap Mr. No. Mr. Mr. Okay. Terrific was on CBS. Yeah, Captain really? Nice was yeah. on NBC. Weren't they on the same night or something? They were both on the same night. Yeah. They were that's both on Mondays. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Terrific was on from 8 to 8.30. Captain Nice was on from 8.30 to 9 o'clock. That's how I got to watch both of them. Exactly. <laughs> so they were both on there. Um, Stan, ooh, I don't even recognize any names here except for, um, well, Dick Godier and Paul Smith. If it's the same Paul Smith that I'm thinking of, Paul Smith, who went, later went on to become Bluto in uh, the I would, Popeye movie. I would bet. I, I would think bet. that's the same Paul Smith. Dick, Do Dick Godier, likely. of course we know Dick Godier. Who Jaime. Be Ronald McDonald. Uh, <laughs> no. What? Well, he was in that Robin Hood show, too. Yes, he was. When but things he were run. He was in When Things Were Run, but he was one of the first. Well, he won the first Ronald McDonald on, on the commercials, but he was a Ronald McDonald well, for a while. Wasn't that nice too. how I glossed over Batman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, um, well, by golly, we've got from um, the, the great uh, success of, of Batman also, there was the Green Hornet. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. It's, on, Channel 8. it's on Channel 8. Channel yeah. 8 is, I guess, for those of you. That. Well, I, well, unfortunately, if you have ACTV, you have cable, and hence you can't get, well, or rarely get, can get Channel 8. This is how you get Channel cable. 8, I have discovered. Yeah. To get Channel 8, you have to have a black and white television with about a, what's a tiny screen? About a 12 inch <laughs> screen. Yeah. 
and it has to be at least 10 years old. Okay. And you have to set it in your kitchen, on your stove. You'll get Channel 8. I think it only Amazing. comes in the kitchen because um, we have a... Well, I have been able to get it up in, in my bedroom. We have a small color TV in the kitchen, and it can pick up um, Channel 8 also. It picks it up well, too. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> you, cannot get, you cannot get Channel 8 you can, if you've got cable. Yeah. If you've yeah. got cable on the same TV, because Channel 8 will Because it's a low-power station, and it's not supposed... And p cable stations aren't supposed to pick it up, so they that's don't. That's right. Yeah. But, but that's where you can watch Green Hornet. Consequently, they show quite a few great of course, shows. Uh, Green, Green Hornet, Hornet showed and, up on Batman one time. Well, he showed up in the episode where they were up against Colonel Gum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the sun recently on the on uh, Family Channel. And then they were on another episode, too, where they just popped through the window one time. And yeah. Like, well, what are you doing here? Yeah. Well, what are you doing right here? here? You know, it's one of those. But then it was a few episodes later that they were And, of course, the Green Hornet episode. was different from a lot of them where in, in that uh, uh, he the public considered him a bad guy. Well, uh, he, he um, presented himself as a, an underworld figure. He was right. actually a hero, right. but he presented himself as an underworld figure to get in with the uh, bad mm -hmm. guys, to find out their operations, and bust them up from the inside. Right. And then but leave before anybody before knew. Before the police showed up or anybody, well, basically, because the police were always on, on the uh, lookout for him. How come no one ever figured out who it was? Because there was, um, like, <laughs> there was like one oriental guy in town. Kato, hey, I wonder if that's the same Kato. He really knows karate well. <laughs> yeah, right. Almost as if he's Bruce Lee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 you guys can kick some butt. That's amazing. Yeah. But but he was always Kato. I mean, he didn't he didn't get to be like you know, he didn't have another name. He just was always just Kato. Just Kato. No one ever caught him. You thought someone would caught him, and and all these guys he sent to jail. You would have thought they would have said some. Yeah, you know, Kato. Kato kicked your butt too. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, doesn't that one Brent Reed guy have a, have a garden in Cato? Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> well, there's some interesting things about the Green Hornet that like well, people don't... Um... Well, there's, there's the fact that if, if you go all the way back to the radio show of Green Hornet, the, they, made a big, they made a big thing, in fact, that Cato was Japanese until uh, the, the time World of World War II. War II, and then all of a sudden, Cato was like uh, from the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> like, ding, oh, he's not Japanese. No, he's not a bad guy. He's Filipino. You know, he's a mm, Filipino. From the Philippines. So, but they, um, in the, they've done a, they're doing a, a Green Hornet comic book now. They started it late last year. Mm -hmm. And they go through and they actually retrace everything and bring it all up to date. And so now there's, like, in the comic book, there's a, a new Green Hornet now, which is like a, the grandson, gra no, he's like a <laughs> grand nephew. Okay. of the original one from the from the radio show right because they go through and they actually did they look at the tv one in there too i have a yeah. green hornet and question. then um yes they uh was his, green hornet related to the lone ranger yes green he was. Hornet is related to john, the lone ranger Britt reed okay. was was is the great great grandson or something like that of okay. john reed the lone ranger he's the lone ranger's okay. nephew um they were both actually created by the same guy george trindle <laughs> created the green and he Hornet. couldn't and think of any other names the lone, lone ranger reed. also <laughs> so he wanted he <laughs> did they it were family it friends was, it was know? intentional it wasn't intentional money, you know? on the uh, oh, okay the, the lone <laughs> rangers kind of <laughs> I can't thing. think of another name other than reed oh, i'll just use it again <laughs> he, he did it was intentionally done oh, okay. okay so in the radio show um like brett reed worked for the daily sentinel newspaper in the tv show he worked not only he did not only had the newspaper but he had a tv station as well Oh, that's standard. And no one could figure out who he was. Well, no one could figure out who Bruce Wayne was. It was the same thing, you <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, I mean... And look at, look at Clark Kent and Superman. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, that one was same real. Same darn thing here. You never seem to see them together. Hmm, you know. Yeah. Uh, but they can't be the same was, person because Clark the, uh, Kent wears, wears those glasses. glasses. <laughs> Superman doesn't wear doesn't glasses. Wear glasses. In, the, in that one episode, the Colonel Gum Batman episode, where they, uh, the, the Colonel Gum sat there and said, well, wait a minute. Now... He's here, and he's here. here, so that means that the that Green Hornet must be, be Bruce, Bruce Wayne. Wayne. <laughs> and, and Batman <laughs> must be, be uh, Brett Reed. Brett Reed, Brett yeah. Yeah, they were convinced that was the case. And then they showed up and said, oh, no, no. that's not it at all. <laughs> so after the Green Hornet and Batman and everything faded, it was sort of a dry spell for a few years. Well, because it died there so quickly anything. that everyone was afraid of it. But they, and then what they came didn't along? actually die. They went to cartoons. And yeah. Right. So, but we're not going to talk about that now. <laughs> we're only doing we're talking about some so live action ones. So there. So, so what we'll along next about? Well, Spider-Man. That's kind of when we got into the. <laughs> Who was first? Um, let's see. Actually, well, I technically it would be Wonder Woman because. Yes. Because you got to go back to the first, to the first pilot of Wonder oh. Woman no. with, Kath, oh, with Kathy no, Lee Crosby. It's the same production company. Yeah. You have to count it. 
Kathy Lee Crosby no, is Wonder can, Woman. We can it's, deny its existence. Well, we can deny it. It exists, I'm unfortunately. It exist unfortunately. <laughs> it was this horrible was thing there. with the Kathy Lee Crosby. It completely blew off most of the of the the whole lore and the whole all the details and basically said, Oh, she's just a really strong gal, you know, and that was about it. And, and you they, didn't get to see the invisible plane, but they mention it. And you didn't get really get to see the the and golden she didn't have the rope. right costume. She didn't have the golden rope until later. And she, she pulled it ugly. out of her belt. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. take off a of Batman. We'll pull the rope out of her belt. Yeah, and that just basically didn't work. And they and so they said, oh, this isn't working. That was like '74, I think. Um, probably. I'm, I'm, it's I'm it's not in here. It must. It, I'd think this book would probably. No, no, that, that, okay. Sadly, everything. that pops up on TV once in a while. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, guys. No, we can't watch that. No, <laughs> that's, that's, that's all bad guys, isn't it? So yeah, it doesn't that matter. Yeah, just dump the bad guys on the floor. Let me see. We're we're looking. When did they come along and find Linda Carter? Who? Well, let's see. The Wonder so Woman's so first telecast was in December of 76, and the last one was in September of 79. In that, though, she went through several different incarnations. Right. Because they started off in the 40s or so. Yes. Where she, it, was during, it was during World War II. Well, during World the World War II. War II thing, and she worked for Major Steve go. Trevor yeah, yeah. and all. And, um, and then, by golly, she pops up again, bing, and it's the 70s. <laughs> and it's still her, and it's like Steve Trevor's son. <laughs> because because the, 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 the thing they said was, well, Wonder Woman's like practically immortal. So, so like, she hardly ever changed, and, and she went back, we assumed, to Paradise Island for like well, yeah. 30 years, and came back, and it's Steve Trevor's son. And she works for that quasi-CIA uh, type uh, organization. IADC. There you go. <laughs> the Interagency <laughs> Defense Command. <laughs> What, one of those various Bunch television... Uh, no, I found the... Um, it probably work better than the real thing. <laughs> yeah, I found the thing here, uh, the uh, Kathy Lee Crosby thing. Uh, and uh, it's... Uh, basically, hardly anybody is in it. And it was 1974. March 12, 1974. We could, like, mark it out, and then it wouldn't... <laughs> 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 nope, never existed. With special guest, but, but special guest villain, Ricardo Montalban. Yes. yes. <laughs> Con, once con? again. <laughs> it's post-con, pre-con. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's con's the all-American way. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, so, the, so the whole Wonder Woman thing changed because, well, what had happened was it was on ABC, and they um, and it went for a while, and then ABC said, well, we like the show, but we don't want to show it right now. We want to wait like a year or two or ten or so, and then we'll show it again. And uh, the production company said, well, you guys obviously don't really want the show, so they went to CBS, and, but CBS said, well, uh, we like the show, but we don't think it should be in the 1940s because that's costing us too much money to be in period. <laughs> so we can make it a lot cheaper if it's current time. And so they just, just changed the series, and all of a sudden it's current time. But, uh... What? Well, I'm just saying ta-da because it was just moved to the current time. Hey, I can't find Spider-Man in here. <gasps> oh, my oh, gosh. It must be in here somewhere. We know it's in here. So, so you had, so you had the Wonder Woman series, and, and about uh, the same time the Hulk developed, didn't it? I think so. Well, the Hulk it seemed like they were all on pretty um, much the same. Was he on at the same? Yeah, about he was. The and then Spider-Man came out after that. They tried Spider-Man after the Hulk was already successful. The Hulk, Doctor David Banner, a <laughs> nuclear scientist, <laughs> wants to try something different. He <laughs> wants to try to accelerate. Um, um, what was he actually trying to do? <laughs> trying to find a cure for cancer? Some, some sort of deal. He, put, uh, he hooked himself up into this big chair, and it kind of just messed all up. Okay, well, so I turned just turned a lovely shade of green when he got angry. Yep, by God. Green golly. with envy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he, well, it doesn't really say what he was trying to do, but by golly. Well, he was playing with stuff he shouldn't have gotten into. <laughs> he was working there with nuclear stuff, and he so see, turned into a big green guy. With nuclear junk. Great big old green guy. <laughs> <laughs> big big green guy. Oh, I've got a I've got a good picture of that. So interesting enough, has kept Believe coming back every once in a while. Well, after the series went off, yeah, here just lately they. Um, he, he's had a couple specials. And they did do a few incarnations yeah, but, where they. The big difference was, I mean, a lot of the other shows were pretty campy. And and the, and the new the new movies of the Incredible Hulk were pretty campy. They had some But at the camp, time, yeah. it, they were really trying to do this very you know it's like oh, I this felt is so dramatic sorry for Dr. Ban. This is dramatic. You know we're doing something completely. Here we go. Here's a nice. Uh, oh hey. There's a picture of uh, Lou Ferrigno and I don't know if we can zoom in on this or not, but uh, this is Lou Ferrigno oh, and, and uh, Bill's got the and Bill Bill's, Bill's got the the, uh, the, the white contacts in yeah. 
I don't know if we can zoom in on that or not. Uh, there we go. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. See? Yeah. And there's, uh, see, right there, yes. The picture isn't black and white. Do Bruce not adjust Banner. your set. And that's, uh, and, no. and of course, uh, Bixby's got the, uh, the weirdo contacts in that'll, that was the last step before he becomes, uh, where he goes green. Okay, it says, let's see, David Banner was a research scientist who had been experimenting with various means of determining the effects of stress on physical strength. In a freak accident in his laboratory, Whoops. David was exposed to a massive dosage of radiation that had a dramatic effect on his physiology. Normally, a quiet, peaceful man, David now found that every time he became angered, he turned into the Incredible Hulk, a huge, greenish, man-like monster with immense strength and primitive passions. Not that they got into those, really, but right. basically he, he just went around and rampaged. He just became a big green guy. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> and he just rampaged. That's about it. Okay. So, um, from there, by golly, there's... Well, you had Amazing Spider-Man, which I found the reference to, okay? <laughs> Spider-Man, whose my favorite thing was climbing up the walls. There's Spider-Man. <laughs> that, uh, the Spider-Man, uh... Uh, Nicholas Hammond, and there's there's a name we haven't heard since the series, pretty much. Or they, it just basically never never really kept caught on. Uh, they tried it way, they tried it over and over. Yeah. CBS was just convinced. Right. So, and they 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 tried a lot of stuff, and it just never seemed to catch on for some reason. They used to climb up the walls. <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, let me see, they didn't. They he was um, still uh, Peter Parker, but they had him in college, and that kind of. That was kind of a little different, and J. Jonah Jameson wasn't as mean in the series as he was in the comic yeah. book, so uh, it just basically didn't work. I there was no Mary Jane either. I don't think they had a Mary Jane Parker in the MJ. series. Nope. There was Julie Masters, a rival freelance photographer. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought the guy that played Spider-Man seemed kind of tall to be playing. I don't know. I mean, I thought Spider-Man would be more of a compact kind of guy to be going up the walls and stuff. And this guy was seen so tall and long-legged, like, like a grass. Well, he just, a he just really didn't fit. <laughs> yeah. He, he just, just didn't fit the idea. By golly, let's let's um. Okay, so that's a, well, basically the uh, the comic book heroes as far as comic book heroes go. But then there were some others. I mean, there's still um. Well, the man from Atlantis. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's not forget the man That's from Atlantis. That's a fun guy. That was a wonderful show. It inspired us all to go out to the pool and try to swim like that. Yeah. <laughs> Which the really, man from really Atlantis. wasn't that easy. Yeah. <laughs> you find it really just didn't, this plane didn't work. Well, by golly, well, no, you know you the man from Atlantis. You uh, Look at, oh, hey, there's a nice picture of Wonder Woman. Oh, there's. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Anyway. You go on with that again. <laughs> Show the one of her lifting the car up. No. no Show the one no. of her getting pretty. <laughs> well, I mean, if she's lifting up the back of a Torino, it could have been Starsky and Hutch's car for all we know. Yeah. Well, yeah, guys, this is my case. <laughs> yeah. Get out of my way. <laughs> but you're looking at the man from Atlantis here. He's um, just, he, he just one day popped up here on the shore. <laughs> Mark he Harris, the man from Atlantis. Swim. Harris is not Patrick his real name. W he washed up after a storm, pre, and he was found by his doctor. <laughs> the pre-Dallas days. Yep. Yeah, uh, we was... got this great show for you, uh, Pat. Uh, we, uh, uh, you got to wear this web stuff, and uh, and you're in the water most of the time. And you know, uh, I heard he couldn't swim really. He no, had he to like learn how to swim. Learn how to swim before he could swim. even do yeah, the show. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. They had to go out and like Did get a wear, real swimming teacher for him. Did he wear like contacts or something? Because he had weird eyes. Um, well, I no. think he wore like contacts. He possibly did because he did have his eyes open a lot underwater. Mm -hmm. But his well, maybe it's just all that chlorine. His character, the way his character <laughs> <chlorine. laughs> on this show wow. actually kind of relates back to an Irwin Allen show, uh, City Beneath the Sea, where they had this one character that was down there. Um, Played by Bert Benning, who uh, his name was Aguila. Aguila swam like that, and then these years later they got the man from Atlanta. So I'm just wondering if there isn't some connection in there. Well, they had the same we don't know. And teacher. then even Bert Benning made an appearance on the man from Atlanta one time. There were like two other. Um, they were. I guess they were aliens. Oh, okay. They were from well, aliens from another planet. Hey, that's a, <laughs> yeah, what, a, so. what an idea. <laughs> anyway, um, aliens from down the street. We've got them, and then. Um, should we look at the, the, the Bionic Man and all well, the... Well, really, that was pretty comic book show, yeah. I, so I yeah. suppose. The Bionic Woman. I mean, you had, you had uh, yeah. Man and Bionic Woman. Steve Austin and... Uh, Jamie Summers. Jamie Summers, and let's not forget uh, uh, the Bionic Dog there yeah. for a while. Yeah, they had the Bionic that. Boy, too. Well, that was later. 
Well, true, but he did make an appearance in the series. He was actually in the series. Was he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Somewhere in there. Okay. They had them both. Well, there was another Steve bionic. Was a, Steve was an astronaut, and he's going up, he's testing this new, uh, I think it was a space shuttle, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Some kind of a one-man space shuttle, oh. and it goes up, and it blows up. It goes up, it blows up. Yeah. <laughs> he can't hold it. It's breaking up, it's breaking up, and it blows up. And, and he, then we see all these weirdo diagrams. They bring and, him back, and, and, and uh, Oscar Goldman <laughs> is in there. He's, well, wait. Oh, I saw. We've, got so, much, we've got so much money invested in this guy. Let's do something else <laughs> with, with him. him. We're working on these bionic parts. We don't have anybody to put them on. Yeah. Let's put them on him. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, we'll own him. Yeah. And so uh, it's, it's like uh, nuclear technology to go into these bionics and... They make him run faster, jump higher, and see better. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait a minute. We could do two of those things with uh, red ball jets on, you know. We could what? run faster and jump higher. Yeah, that's true. We could do a thing for our vision. But and he, he could break geez. things open with one arm, at least. <laughs> and so that that always I bugged. always got the feeling, wasn't he, like, unbalanced? You know, wouldn't that, he just that, have that this... bug me. It's like, I've got this bionic leg, and I've got a regular leg. Yeah. No, 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 both what? his, both his, both legs, his were, legs were bionic. But, but his, his but arm. His arm. Were, yeah, it's like. Didn't he have like one? No, she had the ear, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah, she had an ear. I mean, I'd be going constantly. Shut up! Shut up! Yeah. You're too loud. Shut <laughs> up. You know, you'd think like, you know, you'd get up in the morning and he'd stretch like. Ugh. You know, like. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> you'd think like, what if you're gonna do one arm, just take the other arm off and make them yeah, both do the bionic. Robocop thing. Yeah. Lose the arm. <laughs> Arm. We need to test both arms. That would be so, such such a mess. And you they know? had it's such wonderful, such other wonderful characters in there, like Bigfoot. <laughs> Bigfoot, who was played once by uh, Ted Cassidy and the Andre the Giant, also Andre, played. Yep. Andre the Giant. Well, that was that, that whole there. alien technology. Uh, people show up, and it turns out, old Sasquatch is yet another bionic uh, oh. being. And it's and a, like an alien bionic being, and all this. And, it was uh, like a. Uh, there was another storyline that is like um, the day the Earth stood still, kind of thing. A Klaatu kind of character who comes back and comes to Earth and tries to get people to get rid of their weapons, and he's got this amazing sonic whistle that he does. It was, it was funny. Lots of great stuff on these, on these bionic I guess people I didn't shows. Watch bionic things enough. Oh, they yeah. were just wonderful. Jeez. See them running around in circles. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, and, and the greatest thing about them was when they run, were running fast, they the were slow motion. motion. <laughs> so you think, so you think <laughs> oh, it's slow motion, they must be going so fast. That we have to slow it down. We have to slow or, it down and we never or see, or see them. them. Be Although, gone. in the pilot movie, and let's see, the uh, the whole series was based on um, what, I, Cyborg, Cyborg by Martin, yeah. Martin Caden. Yes. Okay, um, in the in the original pilot, he did run fast. He was, he was moving across that desert. Yeah. <laughs> Moving across the book anyway. <laughs> and then they, they said, then they put him in the cryo sleep at the end of it and said, we'll just thaw him out when we need him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll wake him up as needed. Yeah. And then there was another one that had a um, John Saxon, who's another great one from being in series that don't last at all. He played a he played a <laughs> he played a bionic guy. He was totally bionic too. And yeah. He, was, he, oh, so he wasn't bionic. He was just plain robot. Yeah. yeah. He, was, <laughs> he was cyborg. He was just that's right. Well, that was, well, well, bionic guys are cyborgs. Well, cyborgs. Yeah. Right. This yeah. guy was a total total cyborg. Total and, uh, cyborg or, or humanoid. And of course, there, there's there's something they've they've tried to resuscitate the whole bionic thing the uh, last couple of years with the the bionic uh, gal and the bionic son and the uh, this what the heck? Uh, they tried to bring back Rudy, the whole. Rudy Walls the, was just like, oh, what the heck? We got some money. Let's spend it. <laughs> they just wanted a whole team of bionic people to do yeah. undercover stuff like the Mr. Um, <laughs> Impossible people, but it just, they haven't done any further with that, so hey, stay tuned, they might. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there'll be some more bionic movies, there's no question. Unless oh, yeah. Unless there's a Fall Guy reunion or something <laughs> coming up. <laughs> oh, well. Well, anyway, okay. yeah. looks like uh, we've we've run into yet another uh, end of an episode, hard to believe. And by golly, we didn't even get to touch on Shazam or... Shazam. Oh, oh my darn Isis the luck. Darn the luck. But uh, and Wonder Girl, whatever that we're, was. We're <laughs> we're going to be uh, we're going to be off for a little while because uh, we're applying for series status, and hopefully you'll be seeing us in July at a regular time, so you won't have to look all over the place for us. So for all of us here at uh, Vast Wasteland, we'll see you hopefully in July. Goodbye, everybody. Good night. Good evening, and welcome to another exciting.